What's up guys, Zaxby Sauce, AKA Confusing Surgeon here. Uh, I have a little tutorial for you guys today, a little outside of the, uh, the normal um, playthrough videos and so on and so forth. But uh, So this is gonna be a tutorial on how to drastically, and I mean drastically, speed up your export times uh, if you're using a program like, uh, well in this case only, Adobe Premiere or Adobe Media Encoder. So <clears throat> what, uh, what Premiere does out of the box, when you export a video, it's primarily going to use the CPU to, uh, to render the finished product. So it's going to take the, the video file you've put into Premiere and it's going to uh, use whatever codec you've chosen. Most of the time that's H.264. Uh, it's going to use H.264 or X.264 is the encoder to render an H.264 video and it's going to primarily be uh, the CPU that's going to be doing the brunt of the workload. So the faster your CPU, the better. Um, and, and a media encoder and Premiere are not very good at using multiple cores. So, you know, you get like a, up to around, say, eight or ten cores is about the most with, uh, you know, with hyperthreading on. So you're actually looking at 16 to 20 threads. Around there is about where it maxes out. Uh, anything past that, and it's not really able to take advantage of it. My, for instance, my my desktop is an i i7 6700K. So that's four cores, eight threads. Uh, when I export a video in Media Encoder, it hits 100% CPU usage, and it pegs it at 100% the entire export, even with CUDA processing on, offloading some of that onto the GPU. On my server, my server has two 16 core, 30. 34, no, 16, <laughs> I can't do math, 32, 16, 32, 16 core, 32 thread processor, Xeon processors in it. So that's a total of 64, um, so ba basically 64 threads it can process at the same time. My server with m media encoder running uh, only ever goes to about 30% CPU usage. So, and, and that is with some of the cores being pegged at 100% and some of them barely being used at all. So it does not spread out across cores very well. So, <clears throat> but what you, the problem is, uh, previous to finding out about NV Inc., my server was rendering video at roughly eight to nine times, uh, so if I, the, the uh, initial length of the video. So if I wanted to take a, a uh, game capture that I, rec I record, uh, I actually record in 3440 by 1440, because uh, that's the resolution of my primary monitor, and that's shadow play will not rescale, um, it'll just record in the maximum resolution available. So I record in 3440 by 1440 and then I rescale it in Premiere into 4K. Uh, so I'm taking a 1340 by 14, 3440 by 1440 video. I wanted to rescale it into 4K and then I also add in the tra transitions and effects and stuff like that that I add. Rendering that on my server was taking eight to nine, sometimes even 10 times the length of the original video, even with uh, CUDA assistance with the GPU helping because I, I had a, a 750 Ti that I just I had a spare one so I just stuck it in the server to help with uh, with media encoding so we're talking a 30 minute gameplay video was taking five and a half to six hours sometimes even more to render which is which is ridiculously long time so it, even my desktop with a with a GTX 1070 and an i7 6700k running at 5.1 gigahertz even that would be three to four times the length of the video it would take it to render. Uh, sometimes even five or six times, depending on how the different effects I was using. So that's that's an unacceptable amount of time. Uh, so <clears throat> that that would cause that was causing where I would have to record the videos days, you know, always had to be days in advance because I would need that time to render and then also to upload to YouTube, and then for YouTube to uh, to do its thing and actually because YouTube actually encodes each different quality setting into a different video. So when you when you click on 1080p, that's an, a 1080p video that YouTube has rendered itself. If you click on 4K, it's a 4K video. It's not variable bit rate like Netflix is. It's one constant bit rate for each stream and it has a different video for each one of those. So I found out about NV Inc, which is a uh, third party solution built by just as what seems like just a random guy who was able to figure out how to offload almost all the processing onto the GPU. Now this is not something new. NV Inc is a, a technology um, that has been around for quite a while, since the CUDA, basically since the CUDA technology was around. And there are some systems that use it. OBS, for instance, you can stream 
to uh, Twitch and YouTube using NV Inc and offload the entirety of the encoding uh, portion of the the software onto your to your GPU and your CPU leaving your CPU free to do whatever you needed to do like run the game and it's barely any impact on your GPU. And actually, you can add, you. I've even found out recently that you can, if you put a second GPU. I I run two uh two different GPUs in my system because I, my I have a 107 or I have a 1080 now and a 1050 Ti and the 1050 Ti runs my accessory monitors and I leave that way that way the 1080 only runs my primary display so I lose no performance by running the accessory monitors. What I found out is that OBS will encode using using a secondary GPU. So you can actually have zero performance hit processor and primary GPU while streaming to Twitch with NV Inc on a secondary GPU, which is really nice. So what that what what, what this guy has done though is he's taken that technology and he's he's built it into Adobe Media Encoder. So what you want to do and and Premiere. What you want to do is you want to go you want to just Google NV ENC 1.1.2. No, sorry, 1.12, which is the latest version. This thread in the Adobe forums dated November 24th, 2016. Hit the download link. And it's going to take you to Google Drive. It's all good. I've scanned it. There's no viruses or anything like that. Download the zip. Okay? So far, so good. You can look at the minimum hardware requirements. You have to have a Kepler GPU. You have to have an AMD or Intel CPU with at least SSC. E3 instruction support, which it says here, anything newer than 2008, and that's correct. You would have to have a super old processor to not have at least SSE3. There is support in this newest version for AVX and AVX2, which does speed up the process somewhat, but only newer processors support that. My server can do AVX, but not AVX2, because it is a Sandy Bridge-based Xeon, and uh, while my desktop can even do, can do AVX2, because it's a Skylake uh, Intel processor. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our downloads folder and there is the NV Inc export. You're going to export, double click, go to plugins, common, and take the the PRM file for whichever, uh, whichever of these instruction sets your processor supports. If you want to see which one your processor supports, download a program called Z CPU-Z and it'll say CPU ID. So you can just search for CPU Z on Google. Now, if you look here in instructions, you says, see it says MMX, SSE, SSE2, SSE3, blah, 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 AVX, AVX2. So that means I can use, and you want to use the newest one of those. SSE3 is the oldest, then AVX, then AVX2. So in my case, I can use AVX2. So I'm going to come back here to the plugins. And I'm going to grab AVX2. It's the only one you have to grab. Then I'm going to go back. You want to go to, to your C drive, whatever your OS drive is, or wherever you've installed Adobe Premiere. Program files, Adobe, Adobe Premiere Pro, plugins, common. This does not have to be 2018. This also works just fine on 2017. I'm not, I can't vouch for versions older than that. I've used it on 2017 and 2018. So actually, I need to close Premiere. Let me save this project. I have a test project here that we're going to use to, to show you the, the encoding difference. All right, so now this plugin has now been placed in the NV Inc. export folder. So if we go back to the, uh, the thread on the forums, you'll see minimum software requirements for AAC audio support, which is uh, what that's the audio codec that we want to use for our, our videos. You must separately download Nero AAC ENC. Uh, you don't have to click on this link. Just uh, just copy this and Google it, and it's the first result. And then for multiplexer support, which is what we need, so by default, NV Inc is going to output to MK to uh, MKV, and we want an MP4. So you're going to also copy this, right click, search Google for MV MP4 box, and your it's GPack. The first result, you're going to download the GPack build. So go to Downloads, GPAC Nightly Builds, you want 64-bit, grab the latest binaries, that's going to download that. Now go to Nero AAC Codec, download the codec, 1.5.4.0, perfectly fine. Once both of those are done, go back to your Downloads folder, 
find the GPAC installer, run it. Windows might do that, who cares? I know it's a safe file. Thank you though, Windows. I understand and accept. You can, disk, you can just undo all of those. You don't need any of that other stuff. You just want MP4 box. It's the only thing you want out of this entire package. Send it to the default folder, which is C program files GPAC. Once that's done, grab the Nero AAC codec, extract the zip file, go into here, go to Win32, just, you, I think you only need the ENC, so let's just grab that one. I'm gonna grab that ENC file, go back to where you put GPAC, drop it in there. I already have it in there, so it's just gonna ask me if I wanna replace it, that's fine. So that's good, MP4 box and Nero AAC are in the program files GPAC folder. Remember that, you're gonna need it. Now that that's done, open up Premiere. Now I'm gonna open the test clip project. So this is exactly one minute of, uh, of gameplay footage from another video. So I'm, but I'm ready to export. I've done, let's assume I've done all my transitions and stuff. I'm not gonna put any on this one, so it'll be, it'll run faster, but for sake of argument, let's say I've already done all that. File, export, media. Now, you're gonna to go to your format dropdown and NV Ink is not, not going to be selected by default. You're gonna go down to where it says NV Ink export 1.12, AVX2 or AVX or SSE3, whichever one you were able to run on your processor. Select it. Presets, there's not gonna be any. So just stay with custom. Here is where you need to do a few, thi a few things differently though. First, on the multiplexer tab, drop this down, MP4. Then you need to tell it where that MP4 box file is. Click that button. See? Program Files, GPAC, mp4box.exe. That's good. You don't need any optional arguments, nothing. Just leave it on mp4 and tell it where it is. That's all you gotta do for that part. Audio. You want AAC. You gotta click this button, tell it where Nero AAC is. Because we're people that think ahead, it's in that same directory, double click it. Good to go. Now, go back to video. Here is where you can change your quality settings. So basically you, you wanna leave it for the H.264 profile, leave it on high, that's perfectly fine. Most of these you can leave at default. Here is where, you, where you're gonna probably wanna, wanna make a change. This is constant quality based on the parameters set earlier. This is variable bit rate, this is constant bitrate, and this is two-pass variable bitrate. Two-pass variable bitrate is what you're going to want to use most of the time. If this is something you're going to be putting, you're going to be uploading, especially uploading to YouTube, you want two-pass variable bitrate. What that's going to do is the first, it's going to run through the footage two times. The first time, it's going to take a look at all the, every frame, and it's going to see where the most detailed frames are and where the least detailed frames are, where it can pull bits away and the frame won't look bad and where it, where it needs to add bits in order to make the frame look good at the bit rate you've selected. So if there is a if you're if I'm sitting here looking at the same basic scene for a few seconds, it knows it can pull away some of the data from that and it'll still look fine because there's no motion. But if there's a lot of motion going on in a scene, it knows it's going to need extra data for that scene in order to make it look good, to not artifact. So it's going to take the first pass, it's going to say, where are the scenes in which I, I need less data and where are the ones in which I need more data? The second pass, it's actually going to go and make those changes. So two-pass VBR is one of the best uh, options you can select here. Then you can, scroll, you can leave all these at default. What you want to do is scroll down, just leave all this at default. You Make sure all these are checked depending on which uh, settings you have available. You can set the uh, the width and the height of your video. And so if I wanted to change this to 4K, I, I haven't scaled it in the test project like I normally do, so I'm just gonna leave it at 3440 by 1440. Here's where you need to make another change. Your min maximum and your target. So in my case, I usually target 40 megabits per second, and I give it a maximum of 60. NV ink encoding, 
will be slightly lower quality than the same bitrate setting using your CPU. So if you're gonna use NVENC, make sure to up it. Maybe five or 10 megabits per second is all you need and you won't notice any quality differences between the two. Honestly, I did several tests with the exact same quality and I couldn't tell the difference. Uh, I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe it wasn't the type of media where the difference can be seen, but I couldn't see the difference. So what, what this is saying is that the, the, the video needs to be 40 megabits per second, but for scenes that require extra data, so motion intensive scenes, you can go all the way up to 60 megabits per second in those scenes, but you're gonna need to make up for that by pulling data away from scenes that don't require it. So all that's good. Use maximum render quality, leave that checked. And uh, and then, so this is a almost exactly one minute video, 59 seconds and 52 hundredths of a second. And it says it's going to export it and it's gonna be roughly 288 megabytes. So now I'm gonna hit export. This, this is gonna take roughly, it looks like it's gonna be 15 or 20 seconds is total elapsed time. Now this part is just it wrapping it in, in an MP4 file. Now I'm gonna go to File, Export Media. And for comparison's sake, I'm gonna go back to H.264. We're gonna match source. So it's gonna be 60 FPS at 3440 by 1440, just like it was before. We're gonna do VBR2 pass. And I'm gonna set it, I'm actually gonna give it a slight advantage. I'm gonna give it 35 megabits per second target with a maximum of 50. So this is gonna be a low, it's gonna be rendering at a lower quality than NV Inc was. And now I'm gonna tell it to export. Now look at this. This is pass one of two. Pass one of two is now 10% done in roughly the same time that it took the NV Inc export to complete the entire project. That's the advantage of NV Inc. And I'm telling you, I could not tell the difference in quality. I, I don't know, uh, maybe if, if there are some video experts out there, they could point out to me exactly where the quality difference shows up. But I, I looked at multiple scenes, motion, non-motion, uh, and this is in 4K. I'm, look, I'm looking at scenes in 4K, 4K 60, and I could not tell the difference. So, um, but that's it. You can see how long this is taking. I'm not going to let you, you don't have to sit here and watch this entire thing. It's going to take a lot longer, I'm telling you. So if you have any questions, make sure to post them in the comments section. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.